Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 15th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Microsoft Patch Tuesday, and we got patches for 83 vulnerabilities, seven of which are critical. And then we also have six previously disclosed and one already exploited vulnerability. The one that's already exploited is the Windows App X installer vulnerability, CVE 2021-43890. And this has been used by fairly common malware like Emotet, TrickBot, and the like. The problem with this installer was really more sort of a human user interface problem in that uh, malware could essentially masquerade as trusted software as the installer popped up and warned the user about software about to be installed. Interesting is also a critical vulnerability in the Internet Storage Name Service or ISNS protocol. Now, this is not installed by default. It's part of iSCSI and has a CVSS score of 9.8. However, Microsoft rates the exploitability of this vulnerability as more likely. There are also critical vulnerabilities in Microsoft Office that can lead to a remote code execution and also a 9.8 CVSS score for a remote code execution in Visual Studio Code, the Windows subsystem for Linux extension. The one vulnerability that's certainly worth your attention and uh, patch uh, quickly is uh, the Windows app installer vulnerability, given that it's already fairly widely being exploited. Among the remaining vulnerabilities, I don't really see anything that really warrants uh, expediting the patch other than maybe the ISNS vulnerability if you're actually running this component. And then we are not quite done yet with Log4j and there is an other update for Log4j. So we are now at version 2.16. The tricky part here is that 2.15 fixed the JNDI problem that we originally had and that caused a lot of the problems with Log4j. But uh, there are certain conditions for using context lookups that still may allow for exploitation. Now, log4j 2.15 limited that to the loopback address, so the local host, and with that exploitation is limited, uh, but it could at least result in a denial of service. So, well, hope you took good notes when you updated to 2.15. And if you're not done yet, which is more likely, just jump ahead and go all the way to 2.16 in order to also fix that second problem. Now, if you delayed patching and instead are relying on the configuration change via the format message no lookups variable, that works but is not always sufficient. Applications with a custom message factory or applications that are using logger.printf uh, may still do some of these message lookups. So in this case, well, uh, you're not quite secure. So it's pretty much patching is the solution and you should patch to 2.16. Now to assist you in patching, we do have an application that uh, Remco Verhoff, one of our handlers released and this application allows you to scan various tar and jar files for instances of log4j it will mark the ones that are vulnerable and then also create patches for those applications he said it's pretty much alpha of course it's just a couple days old this application i see updates from two hours ago but he has used it already on a number of applications and so far very successful it runs on various uh, operating systems like uh, Windows, Linux, OS X, and FreeBSD. And Apple yesterday released an update for iOS, iPadOS, uh, Mac OS, tvOS, watchOS. These updates, as usual, focus very much on features, but do include a number of uh, security patches. 
I don't see any sort of screaming critical vulnerabilities here, but certainly something you do want to update. Some of the vulnerabilities, for example, affect audio files that can lead to arbitrary code execution. Also a few WebKit vulnerabilities that could be exploited via the malicious web page. I didn't see anything that would indicate that any of these vulnerabilities is already being exploited. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.